Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. Today we've got a rifle modification video. The Ruger 1022, one of the America's most loved 22 long rifle uh, semi-automatic rifles. Um, personally, I use these things to, to hunt rabbits, um, shoot prairie dogs, you know, uh, target practice, all that kind of stuff. Love the rifle. One of the things that's always bugged me about these rifles is the stock, and especially the uh, the comb height. Um, you know, they for my build and, and my face and everything, um, these stocks are a little bit low, even just with the iron sights. Throw a scope on top of them, and your my cheek is always floating uh, on the stock. I never get a good cheek weld. Cheek weld is pretty important for repeatable accuracy in, in field positions, uh, you know, and, and so, uh, you know, a nice uh, uh, fit in this portion uh, between the rifle stock and your cheek is, uh, it, it helps out quite a bit. Now, in one of my other videos, um, I did a review on the, the Benjamin Marauder. Uh, it's a, a PCP air rifle. And it has got uh, an adjustable cheek piece on it, and boy, that thing has really spoiled me for uh, you know for for shooting you know either target practice or, or hunting. And so the, uh, with 22 long rifle ammunition is getting much easier to find now. So I decided to dig out the old 1022 and you know go bunny hunting with it. Well, right off the bat, I thought, man, I wish this thing had a uh, an adjustable cheek piece like my Marauder does. So I got to looking at it and I thought, well heck, why doesn't it? So I went ahead and put one on there. And it actually came out really nice. There's the, it adjusted right now to that scope. Now, uh, a couple of words on your scope and your mounts. You know, if you, you know, you can play around with different bases and different rings and different size scopes, you know, to get your scope down as low as you possibly can. And that helps out an awful lot on the amount of rise that you need on your, your cheek piece. And as you can see here, I've got uh, a, weaver, uh, a weaver base. These, these rifles generally come with a 3 8 inch dovetail base. Um, you take the little plugs plug screws out of the top of the receiver and then you put the 3 8 inch uh, dovetail rail on and then with the included screws screw that down and then put the you know the pinch type um, scope rings on it and uh, you know that's that's how you mount a scope these weaver bases it sure seems to me like you can get them a little bit lower because uh, this is a this right here is a screw that goes through the other side and it seems like to me that they're they're a little bit lower but anyways I've got this one mounted just about as low as it can possibly get um, and it's a, a center point uh, 3 to 9 by 32 millimeter so the 3 to 9 is your your power range uh, 3 Three power all the way up to you know three four five six all the way up to nine and the 32 millimeter is your objective diameter so a popular scope is a three to nine by four uh, three to nine by 40 okay well this is a three to nine by 32 so it's a little bit smaller on the objective bell but even at that with this rear sight being here a doubled up dollar bill drags a little bit and a single dollar bill passes through easy. So this is about as low of a mount system as, as I can get. I suppose, like I said, this is a, a Leopold Rifleman Weaver base and uh, Weaver um, low rings. But it's mounted as low as it can get and I still have uh, about 5 eighths about five-eighths of an inch that I brought this up. So anyhow, so now that you've kind of seen that, we'll go 
show you a little bit about how I did it. This right here is just a drop chart for the two different uh, um, styles of ammunition that I shoot through this rifle. Okay, so that's that's the clean side. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. This right here is the business end of it. And I'll swing this around. About like that. Okay, so this is pretty much an almost straight-up copy of the style that the uh, the style of adjustable cheek piece that the Benjamin Marauder has on it. There are a couple of, or I bet I, I guess about the only real big difference is is the the way I put it together, and we'll go through that right quick just in case you'll you'll want to do it. But you see. Ah, see those two dots? Those are the ends of the quarter inch brass rod that I use that are the the riser pieces. So anyhow, so when I went to build this, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about it, you know, running the order of events through my head, <clears throat> trying to decide what would be the best order of operations to be able to get this put together or get this piece cut out and then get it lined back up with the rest of the stock and make sure that the holes were going to still be in line you know so that it would move straight up and down uh, you know nice and easy so What I did was I just grabbed a piece of uh, quarter inch brass rod, just normal old quarter inch brass rod you can get at Home Depot or wherever. And I took a F, well you'll never be able to read that, an F drill bit, okay, uh, the letter F. That drill bit is slightly over a quarter of an inch in diameter. Okay, so if the, the brass rod is a quarter inch in diameter and we need it to slip down through there we need a, a bit that's just slightly over a quarter inch in diameter and the F bit is one that I use for uh, knife making um, you know the handle uh, Corby bolts and everything so what I did was rather than cut this piece out first and then try to locate precisely the the holes and then drill the holes in this piece and then in this piece you know from the inside so that they would line up perfectly I thought boy the chances of me pulling that off are you know probably pretty slim to none so what I did was before I made the cut or anything I just took the stock took the um, the action out and everything and then taped it up with blue painters tape drew out my cut line figured about where I wanted my uh, my riser pins here to be then drilled a couple of pilot holes with an eighth inch drill bit then opened them up to that number F or letter F drill bit so I had these two holes drilled before I cut anything out and these holes go down I think this one goes down to about here and this one goes down to about here so <coughs> Once I had the holes drilled, then I re then I figured I could make the cut, and you know no matter what, this portion would stay in line with this portion. Okay. Once I got that done, then um, I went ahead and measured out my my pins. This one's longer and this one's shorter, of course, because the stock is shorter. Um, roughed up the ends of the pins that were going to go into the cheek piece. And then cut a couple of, uh, you just take a file or put it on a grinder and, and make some angled cuts in it. And that gives the epoxy something to grip onto so that it's a mechanical lock as well as a, a, an epoxy type lock. And epoxy those two in place. Now I had a piece, um, you know, a cheek piece that would come up. But as soon as I turn it loose it would drop back down again. So then what I did was... 
I grab a 3 8 inch bolt and I forgot what size this was probably like a 1024 I think chucked the big bolt up in the lathe punch the the right diameter hole through the center of it for the tap and then tap that hole to take this bolt okay made two of those then located my pins or located where they were going to go just by eye here drilled a pilot hole from you know the outside of the stock into the up and down hole on both of them and then uh, grab the right size tap for this and on the tap it'll say your your drill bit size drilled that drill bit size through both holes and then once I uh, found out how you know long they needed to be shortened them up cut slots here I'll take one of those out cut slots in the head of the in the head of the bolt so that I could go ahead and screw these in here make sure they were at the right depth and then screw, take them back out epoxy put a little bit of epoxy around the threads and then screwed them back in so these are actually threaded and epoxied into the wood then cut a slot in the end of my There you go. Just cut a regular old flathead screw slot in the end of the, the smaller bolt. So it'll thread right in there and then tighten up and lock that pin in place. So once it's all said and done, now I got this uh, pretty close mark to where I want it. Um, I'll still have to adjust it a couple of times until it gets to fit just perfect. But you loosen these screws up. There are your risers. You can see here I have it marked there which is where it's sitting. And there's quite a bit of adjustment. There's uh, two inches worth of brass rod from the bottom of the cheek piece to the end of the rod. Put it back in place. Now I, I left these a little bit long so it won't actually go all the way back down into the stock. I think it goes in a little bit more than that. Well, maybe so. Because I figured I probably wasn't ever going to shoot this rifle with iron sights again at all. But if you wanted to, you could just shorten up those pins and it would fall all the way back down, you know, to where it was. Now, uh, at this setting right here, I think I measured it and it brought this cheek piece up about five-eighths of an inch from where it was. Yeah, we're about five eighths, three quarters, somewhere around there, <clears throat> um, from where it was when it was sitting down flush. Oh, after I made the cut, what I made the cut with was just just a regular old coping saw. And these right here, you know, you uh, loosen up the handle, and then you can adjust the blade, so you know you can keep the handle tight. Uh, keep the handle tight and the blade straight up and down and make your cut into about there and loosen up the handle rotate the blade tighten the handle back down and then make your cut all the way through and then either come out that end or or you know 
swap it back around and go through the other way. When I made the cut, it uh, or this cut right here to cut the cheek piece out, I actually cut it pretty close since I had you know a line drawn on the tape on either side to you know to have a guide. Had it clamped up in the vise, you know, um, and actually came pretty close. But you know, it being a handsaw, there was a couple of places I was off, so I ended up having to come back in here with uh, with a wood rasp and some sandpaper wrapped around a, a dowel and smooth all this up on both sides of it and then uh, so I lost about I don't know a sixteenth of an inch of wood you know on on uh, either side of the cut to clean everything up once I got everything uh, done the epoxy was cured and everything and then I came back up in here with some uh, I just used brown leather dye dyed the wood back once that dried came back in with true oil and oiled this all up really good so that the you know moisture can't get into the wood and swell it and you know maybe warp this I kind of doubt this would move at all but it might warp this or you know it might try to loosen up the epoxy or you know these pins might bind up a little bit if they were uh, if the wood was had been wet and warped and everything <coughs> but anyways um, yeah, so the, the total cost of the whole project was about six inches worth of quarter inch brass rod, two different size bolts, um, and a, an afternoon in the shop. And like I said, it works really slick. Loosen up these two screws, adjust it. Um, if you're sharing a rifle, you know, you got somebody else that uses the rifle occasionally. Uh, you know these work out really nice but boy it is really nice to be able to raise this cheek piece up and get a good solid cheek weld. Um, heck of a lot cheaper than a new stock. Um, I kind of like the old stock that's on there now. You know I mean uh, you know it's nice and light and short and everything and that with that new modification boy it is really slick. Anyway uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.